Hi students, today I am going to explain how to determine the, the angle of deviation of the given prism and the angle of minimum deviation of the prism. So, this is my prism, this is an equilateral prism. So, the angle of the prism is 60 degree. So, to find the angle of deviation, we need a, a protector and a bell pins and a, a scale. So, Using this apparatus, I am going to explain how to find determine the angle of deviation of the prism. So, first, uh, I am going to take this prism. So, take this line. So this is my prism outline. So this is my prism. Of this side is my A, this side is my B, and this side is my C. So now I'm going to take the normal of this my side A and B. So the normal of side B, I should need a protector. So I'm going to consider some random point here. So, if I place here, so with respect to my plane AB, take 90 degree. So now this is the normal of this plane AB. So the ray of light coming from some source and hit this point which makes an angle i it's called angle of incidence so i'm going to consider my initial angle of incidence around 40 degree so from here i'm going to consider 40 degree so after 90 80 70 60 and 50 from here it's going to be 40 degree so my angle of incidence of this prism so this incident ray is I. So we have to measure from 90. So 10, 20, 30 and 40. So my angle of incidence of this prism should be I equals to 40 degree with respect to the normal. So now what I am going to do here, I am going to place two bell pins in this line. Two bell pins. So now I'm going to place my prism. So because of the prism we are placing here, the image of this bell pins is refracted in this direction. So now we look at this side. So there is a refraction of this bell pin in this side so in this straight line we are going to place a bell pin here So now, look at this, all four 
pins the two pins from the angle of incidence the two pins in the angle of emergent so are in straight line so now we are going to connect these lines so i just remove this prism here so i have a uh, these two points i just remove this pin so we are going to connect these two lines so this is my emergent ray so we want to find the angle of uh, emergent i should need again a, a protector so we're going to take the normal of this point so what is the normal the perpendicular line of this ac so this is my perpendicular line here so once we take the perpendicular line take the straight line so now the angle between this normal this is my normal n1 this is my normal n2 a phase 2 so which is an angle e it's called angle of emergent so now the angle of emergent is from here i'm taking so from 90 10 20 30 40 50 and this is my 60 so my angle of emergent is equal to 60 degree so from these two values i am able to find my angle of deviation so i just remove the pins so my angle of deviation formula is my delta equals to i plus e minus a so where my a is already given is since it's a equilateral triangle we're taking 60 degree so by calculating these things i'm able to write my delta equals to 40 plus 60 minus 60 so my delta is nothing but the value of the 60 60 degree that's going to be 40 degree so now we are going to calculate my delta so this is the actual path of the incident ray so this is the direction of your actual path of the incident ray that we draw this dotted line is my actual path of the incident ray if i retrace the path of the emergent ray in this side so the angle between this dotted line and this emergent ray it's called angle of deviation so if you are measuring this point here from this point see so this is my emergent ray you may place my point at this point mark is the intersecting point so if this is my intersecting point so this is nothing but my incident ray this is my actual path of the incident ray because of this prism it's got refracted in this direction now it's going to be in 50 degree so 90 10 20 30 and 40 so my angle of deviation is 40 degree so i am able to find my angle of deviation this is how we are able to find the angle of deviation so then how can i find the angle of minimum deviation of this prism so from this formula the angle of deviation is depending upon our angle of incidence and angle of emergent and angle of the prism so if i vary my i value my angle of incidence i can vary the angle of emergent so automatically my delta is depending upon your i so if i plot a graph between if i plotting a graph between the, the angle of incidence this is the delta value 
so if i increase my delta since my a is a constant if since my a is a constant if i increase the delta value or if i increase my i value my delta value is reduced since this a is a, a constant so this value is reduced if i increase my i value this value is reduced 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 at a particular value it attains minimum value so when it is minimum so when when my i equals to e my angle of incidence equals to angle of, angle of emergent my deviation is minimum so this value of deviation is called delta m is called angle of minimum deviation so after that what's happening if i increase my further i value it starts increasing my delta value so this value is called your angle of minimum deviation so at the angle of minimum deviation when my i equals to e my delta will equal to delta m so this is how we are able to find the angle of minimum deviation of the given prism so my angle of minimum deviation of the given prism we may write delta m equals to n minus 1 into a so where n is my refractiveness of the medium with respect to r so a is my angle of the prism so the angle of minimum deviation of the particular prism is going to be a, a constant so if you like this video share with your friends and subscribe to the channel to get the regular updates so thanks for watching